Hello, welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and uh, I have a CD printer review again and this box is sent to me by Artillery Company and this printer is Genius Pro. Uh, this is uh, the smaller version, smaller printer from new generation. Uh, the biggest is the Artillery Sidewinder X2. Earlier I did a review of the Artillery Sidewinder X1, this is V2, uh, but now I got the the smaller printer now from uh, this company uh, but the specifications uh, the improvements which are included on this one are uh, most of them are also included on on x2 of course the biggest difference is the printing volume so this is smaller printer with a volume of 220 and 220 millimeters in x y direction and 250 millimeters in z direction here you can see the list of uh, main specifications few i want to mention and the most important thing is the uh, auto bed leveling sensor which is now included on uh, this printer uh, it has the Vulcan nozzle but uh, with those uh, speeds with 0.4 mm nozzle you will probably not use these possibilities but it will be very useful if for example you swap the nozzle to I don't know, 0.6 or 0.8 mm uh, in that case you can still use that uh, maximum speed but uh, now this uh, Volcano nozzle can melt this uh, bigger amount of the plastic because the flow rate will be increased with this. It has a direct drive extruder, this means the, the stepper motor is just above the hot end and this gives us possibility to print, uh, for example, TPU filaments too. It has dual Z-axis. Now a few words about this. Uh, for example, on N3 I did uh, two separate videos uh, for the upgrade to dual z-axis. Uh, one is with two stepper motors and the other is with the timing belt holding uh, two lead screws in synchronization. And I have been asked so many times which one is better. And my answer is always the same. I measure these things. So the uh, version with two stepper motors is uh, more precise because the same signal is sent to two stepper motors and uh, they are always in synchron. The problem is that they are not powered. In that case, if I accidentally press one side of the X uh, extrusion, you can move accidentally uh, to uh, lead screws from the synchronization. A uh, version with the timing belt is not so precise, but uh, precise enough, of course. Uh, but in this case, uh, they're always in synchron, even, even the, uh, the, when the stepper motors are powered off. And of course, the best is combination of these two. And that's what we have here on this uh, Genius Pro and also actually on the Sidewinder 2. Uh, just quick disclaimer, there is one better version uh, when we have two stepper motors and separately two stepper motor drivers. So independently we can move one or the other stepper motor. And then for example in Marlin, I think that's G34 uh, command, uh, we can do that uh, send to printer and it will automatically level the X gentry according to information on the BI touch. And one important thing I want to mention, uh, it is a specification on the side, but I know from the previous version that it is quiet. Not only the stepper motor drives, but also the fans, and I hope that's the case with the Genius Pro 2. Of course, you can see other specifications on the website, but now let's see what's in the box. Interesting, when uh, I did the review of the idea you signed by the X1, uh, that printer arrived from uh, China and I had to re write a detailed report to the customs what I'm buying from the artillery company. And uh, how this package is sent to me from Europe, so I didn't have problems with the customs. Here's a small bag with, with tools, spare parts, USB drive. Parts of the spool holder, ribbon cable, installation manual, English, German language, parts for the spool holder, power cable, and this is the gentry. Here you can see two uh, lead screws, and there is a timing belt on the top. And this is the base of the printer. There is a piece of plastic, probably this is some part of the part cooling. And the box is empty. 
The assembling process is extremely simple. So all I have to do is to mount this uh, gentry to the base and fix it by these uh, two bolts, uh, two from each side. And they are pre-installed and I have to tie them from the bottom. And then I have to mount the spool holder on the top. Uh, I have to check the tensions on the V-slot wheels, uh, connect the cables and actually I can turn it on. About this part which was separating the box, uh, I cannot see that it is included in the part list, so I believe that it fell down during the shipping. And it has to be here. Uh, I can see it was glued properly. Now it is in a place, but it, it will not stay there, so probably I have to glue it somehow back. But I will do it later. Uh, always my curiosity, I want to see what's inside. And I don't recommend you to do this, or uh, otherwise you will lose the warranty. This is how it looks from inside. So here goes the power and the power cable. Uh, there is a switch here uh, to set the correct voltage, the 220 or 110 uh, volts. And this is the power supply. I cannot really see the information on it. And from this it goes to the main board. Now on main board I can see uh, one, two, three, four stepper motor drivers. So probably we don't have that uh, two different uh, drivers on the Z axis. Uh, the stepper motors on Z axis are properly driven from the same stepper motor driver. But I can see one more space for another stepper motor driver. So this can be upgraded uh, adding another stepper motor driver. And in that case maybe we can have a separately uh, driving stepper motors on Z axis. And from this goes the cable to the uh, touch screen display. About the fans, well, actually, I can see only one fan. It's quite big. Uh, bigger fans, which rotates on the lower RPM, are quieter. So I hope uh, this will also be a quiet machine, like with the previous uh, Sign Weather X1. Starting with step one, this is the uh, goes to the front side of the printer, and uh, it is very important to connect uh, these two plugins. So this uh, connector goes into the this plug. Here are the bolts they are pre-installed. All I have to do is to tie them. I will start with my hand. Now the other side. Next step is mounting the spool holder. Earlier versions ha had only uh, these two uh, rollers and we always had to adjust the distance according to the width of the spool. And now they include these uh, rollers which goes on these ball bearings. And now finally the distance is fixed and we don't have to adjust the distance. And actually this was one of the first upgrades I printed for this uh, Sidewinder, the previous version. This is the back side of the printer. And I have to secure the position with this small bolt. Looks like only one side has to be secured, but I think it's okay. We are limited now to approximately 80 mm wide spool. This is the filament runout sensor. Uh, this pool is 90 millimeter thickness <laughs> and actually uh, it can hold of course it is now on the edge but but it's it's rolling and let's start with the wiring i will start with the filament runout sensor next with the connection of the z axis motors one on this side On this side we have the filament runout sensor going down into the base. And on this side uh, I don't need this. Uh, I think this is the spare cable if you somebody want to install the limit switch. But we have here a B attached so we don't need this one. Next step is adjusting the tension on V-slot wheels but first I have to remove these uh, zip ties.
and I have to lift higher the z-axis it will be easier to operate with it adjusting the tension on x and y axis is classic uh, we have two wheels which are fixed and one is with exciting nut from the bottom uh, same case is here on the y axis uh, only the z-axis is a little bit different that has to be adjusted with these set screws here if I hold the X carriage uh, and I cannot rotate the wheel with my hand then the tension is good now I can rotate it so I have to use this open end wrench and tight it on y-axis the eccentric nuts are on the right side On z-axis we can adjust this tension with these two set screws uh, but first let's check uh, these wheels are rotating freely mm -hmm. now I can feel some tension on it and same on the other side and when I'm on this uh, back side I want to show you a very important thing so there is the switch now it is set to 230 uh, if you live in US in that case uh, this has to be on 110 volts so you, you have to use some tool and, and switch it to the other side and uh, also I would like to talk about two things uh, I really like this uh, ribbon cable how nicely uh, is solved and it move in this slot here so uh, I think this is one of the best solution I saw so far on these inter the printers I have here and uh, another thing I want to mention is this heating on this uh, glass it is directly uh, connected the heater to the glass it, this means it is lighter uh, and it uses uh, directly the AC voltage for the heating so it will heat this glass very quickly but this is extremely nice solution so I don't know if other manufacturers are looking at this video but uh, definitely uh, learn from this now I believe that Arthur could, uh, could learn a few things too so this is the beer touch but uh, look what we have here we have these uh, springs and uh, knobs for adjusting the bed leveling but if this is pre-installed with the bed leveling sensor then actually this can be fixed this reminds me for those boys uh, from history when they got the steam machine but just in case they keep the sail too at least these, spring, these are those yellow springs uh, which are stronger and with the flat surface so they will keep the position for the longer period but I think this could be fixed. Just a few quick examples. This is the pusher printer which arrives with the pre-installed auto leveling sensor. This is a Kaibu Tycoon. And this is the BQ B1 SE Plus from my latest video. I can connect the power cable. I can now remove the protection foil from the display. I will also remove these two stickers and now let's turn it on build touch self test and it's ready as always I want to check the moving of the axis so go to tool move and let's start with the Z up down moving ok Y axis moving X moving now I have to start with the bed leveling. These are the steps for leveling the build plate. First we have to preheat the nozzle and the bed and do the manual bed leveling. And uh, it is important because uh, you will get more squared objects. Just imagine if this bed is under, under this angle, the bead touch will uh, create a mesh offset and it will know on this side that it is higher and it will compensate that during the printing. Uh, but we will not get the perfectly squared object. That's why it is important to do that first manual bed leveling as precise as possible. It would be best if this beer touch don't have to compensate anything at all. That's why I prefer the, those uh, versions where, which don't have these springs and cobs, but the bed is uh, fixed. Of course, in this case, we always have the options uh, to install the Z-limit switch. And in that case, we would need these uh, knobs and then these uh, springs, but um, that would be a step backward. Let's preheat the nozzle and the bed. I want to see the heating through this thermal camera.
and here I can also notice those cold spots uh, not only where the knobs are but also in the center this means I have to wait a little bit more time uh, before start the printing until the temperature is equal everywhere <laughs> so if you want to print small parts it is best if you position them here And I'm also a little bit confused, so we have the uh, four spots above the knobs, one in the center, and also here there is one cold spot too. Now even after three or four minutes, you can see the temperature of the cold spot is 46 degrees Celsius, until the hottest uh, part is 60.7 degrees Celsius. In the center it is 49, 45 in the other corner, 46. Anyway, it's preheated, now let's go to the tools and level. And this is some kind of uh, assisted manual bed leveling, so we will go uh, for the first point. And it will do the homing now. Of course the Z-axis homing is uh, in the center with the BL touch. And now with a piece of paper I have to move the knobs until I get that perfect friction. Okay, now the second point. Third point. Fourth point. And if I could check. The one in the second. Perfect. Now the bed is leveled manually. And uh, let's do the first auto bed leveling in tools, more, auto level. Probably do the homing again and then it will take several points and we will save that to the EEPROM. The leveling is finished, now I have to click here EEPROM e -prom save. Ah, we have here LED. Okay, back. Now in manual it says uh, to go to the tools, more and Z0. Uh, it says I have to use a piece of paper and use this uh, Z plus and minus uh, 0 0.025 to set the correct distance between nozzle and the paper. Let's lift it up a little bit. EEPROM save. I almost forgot that I have to glue this part here to the fan, so I move the z-axis higher. And it's time to print something. I will see what is on this uh, USB disk because I always recommend to print something which is prepared by the manufacturer for the first print and then you can prepare the slicer and print your own objects. Preheating the PLA. Through the filament runout sensor and the LED turned from red to green. And now into extruder. Now let's see what's in the USB disk. Cube, I hope that's calibration cube. It starts with calibration cube and this is the brim and uh, wow it is extremely quiet printers. Probably this is the best angle for recording because LED is on this side. 
Pretty is ok so far, only the bed temperature went up to 75 degrees Celsius, now it is cooling down to 60 and uh, well, maybe that's good because there are some cold spots and at least there will be with almost equal temperature. Yes, 69, 68 and 60 degrees according to the uh, display. But still very cold spots on the side. Printing is at 50%. That's what's option we have during the printing. We can change the temperatures. We can change the filament and if I press this, uh, the extruder will stop and I can uh, unload more the filament. We can pause and stop the printing. I can turn on and off the LED, change the fan uh, rotation speed, the printing speed and these are baby steps for the Z offset. Printing is at 71% but let's check the filament runout sensor. The LED turned to red now and it stopped with the printing. Oops. I pull out this small tube, but it's just uh, a guide for the filament. I can see the filament is down. Mm, resume. Okay, it works. Printing is almost finished. Uh, it is on 99%. And what I like here on the display that I can see the current Z axis. So I'm missing very often on the other printers. And uh, this is a little bit bigger uh, cube than that regular calibration cube. So the printing time is approximately 30. 8 minutes and it is finished now. And quickly check the bed adhesion, which is okay, it's it's good. I hope not too good, so I hope uh, I can remove it easily when, when uh, the bed cools down. The bed is cooled down to 24 degrees Celsius. I clean the brim and let's check the size of the cube. Mm, 30, properly it should be 30 millimeters. It's, it's close, that's okay. I'm not sure about the size, but uh, I can see some horizontal lines here along the z-axis, so it's, it's not really perfect. I'm not sure how much is visible on camera too. Anyway, and now I want to prepare the cura and uh, to slice some old novel object. Oh, and this calibration cube was printed faster than I expected. Actually, this will be discussed later, but I wanted to place it here. Uh, I re-sliced this uh, calibration cube and uh, I can see the quality of the surface is much better compared to uh, this one which uh, G-code was prepared by manufacturer so I think they should update the G-code, maybe use some newer slicer but definitely this surface is much better compared to this one this is the content of the USB disk here we have this user manual it is in seven languages and this is the installation version of the Cura, but you can always download from the website. And now let's add this printer to the Cura. Search for the uh, artillery Genius. The size is same, but I will rename it to Pro. So I don't have to change anything here because uh, the sizes are the same. And also the filament diameter. And now I will insert my first object, which is a Benchy. Only I will move it to, from those cold spots. Slice it, save the G-code to, to USB disk and print it. Print. And it's, it's a little bit hard to read, so if I have our longer names, it will be good to have some kind of scrolling or similar. And there is a bench.
printing is finished and when it stops I will check the bed adhesion quite strong I hope it will be easier to remove when it cool down and this came out down quite easily and let's check the skirt well it's quite easy when it starts coming down that's a pity that it is not flexible otherwise it would be very easy to remove it and now I noticed that this bench was printed in 1 minute and 28 minutes on a different settings and this is uh, faster than the average printer usually I need approximately 2 hours hmm, it was still quite strong so let's analyze this bench a little bit and actually it came out better than that uh, sample cube which was on the disc uh, I cannot see those horizontal lines anymore, just a little bit, maybe one step here. Uh, these are seams, and they are also uh, quite small. Uh, the overhang came out perfectly, the bridging too, and uh, there are no stringing at all, thanks to the direct drive extruder, which do the retraction very precisely. So this is really good benchy, one of the best I printed so far. And as always, with the direct drive extruder, I have to test printing some flexible filament. It finished the skirt, now it starts with the objects, which will be just uh, a protection for the leg of the bed for my youngest daughter, because uh, to protect it uh, hitting with the door not the best object for testing TPU because I cannot see that stringing but uh, definitely I can check the printing speed it's filling the corners with some small spots so if there would be a stringing it would be visible and incredible I cannot see one string um, and I'm not surprised because the artillery sign binder, the oldest version, uh, is the best for printing TPU for, for these uh, 15 printers I have at home. And I think here we have the same case. So this uh, Titan Dari Drive Extruder is extremely good for TPU. And it even works with, uh, I think, two, almost 2 mm retraction, which is a lot for the Dari Drive. This is slow motion and watch the retraction on that bigger gear. Printing is finished, I'm very happy that I can see the Z-axis on the display. And I think this will be very easy to remove, because similar like if I have a flexible bed, only now the object is flexible. <laughs> Maybe even too easy, but of course the contact surface is very small. And quality of this is fantastic. These are seams, but the surface is great. One last test I want to do. This is crazy thing I never tried before, and I'm not even sure that it will success. But I have the G code on the USB drive, which I use to print this uh, PLA benchy, and I'll try to start that uh, G code. But now the TPU will be here. Only two things I will change there, and that's that I will raise the temperature to 230 degrees Celsius on a nozzle and reduce the bed temperature to 50 degrees Celsius or, or maybe I can even leave it on 60 I will see so wish me luck print and this is the same G code for the PLA Benchy to 2.30 
and it's finished. Printing time. One hour, 28 minutes. And it quickly check the bed adhesion. It was good. <laughs> this is crazy. This is first time I tried this, so there is only one string because there are no retractions on the final ring, the object. And only one problem I can see, and it's here, because the overhang was too big and I saw that it uh, it's curled up the material and the nozzle press it down. Uh, but when it reduced the overhang, actually it was finished correctly. Only a few strings I can see inside. And of course the seams are also visible. And there are a few spots here, which we don't have on PLA. And uh, maybe here we a little bit more stringing. But yes, I can confirm. So this is the best CD printer I have for TPU printing. Well, it was a hard start. Uh, I heard there a little bit at the beginning about the cold spots on the build plate during the heating. But the bed adhesion was so good that uh, I even had to raise the Z offset to remove easily the objects from the glass. Uh, the second was this uh, cube, which G code was uh, on this USB disk and it was prepared uh, by the manufacturer. And I thought there is some problem with the Z offset because of these horizontal lines. But then I prepared my own calibration cube in the slicer and uh, the quality of the surface is much better there are no horizontal lines i'm not sure is it visible now on camera too uh, but the quality is much better so definitely artillery should uh, replace this g code uh, prepare it with some newer slicer or something like that now the artillery is listening to the feedbacks because i can see several improvements even i mentioned in the review of the sidewinder and for example, that's uh, the, this holds uh, rollers on the spool holder. For example, these ribbon cables are now secured with this plastic part. Uh, and my favorite is this uh, ribbon cable on the bed, a heated bed. That's fantastic solution, really. On eBay, I saw that this printer is advertised like uh, see the printer with the thermal runaway protection. I know, I thought that is some standard nowadays. Uh, it would be much useful to advertise it like uh, super silent, quiet see the printer because it is. From my collection, I think uh, this is the quiet see the printer. I didn't measure it yet. Uh, maybe I will create some comparison video. I will see. And uh, it can print TPU perfectly. For TPU, this is the best printer also I have, and I have 15 different CD printers, and seven from them are with direct drive extruder. And uh, printing a Benchy with the speed of the PLA, with PLA settings, only changed the, the temperature. And the only problem was this overhang here on the front. That's, that's fantastic, so really. Uh, space for improvements? Well, yes. Uh, for example, uh, I still don't like the heating of this build plate, those cold spots. I can never be sure that maybe some smaller part will be exactly on this, uh, that cold spot and maybe it will be removed uh, during printing several parts, for example. Uh, another thing is if they trust to this uh, auto leveling uh, sensor, in that case uh, they shouldn't use the, the springs and these rotation knobs. For user, the, these two problems are easier to solve. Uh, for example, installing a PI sheet, only that magnetic base has to be glued to this glass because it's not removable. And these springs can be replaced with uh, some silicone columns or something like that. Uh, and maybe uh, I don't like several things, but there are small issues. <laughs> this display, but the other reason, because now I have several printers with a bigger display and more responsive touchscreen. Uh, so I hope the screen will be replaced in a new generation. And I'm awaiting the moment where we, uh, Chinese uh, CD printer manufacturers start using, I know, linear rails or rods, and maybe using some better hot ends, uh, which is able to print up to maybe 280 degrees Celsius, because there are so many great filaments which, which has to be printed on this temperature. I know if I miss something, uh, please uh, leave me some comments. Um, thank you for watching and happy printing!